Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the last game of Chessable Masters 2020 quarterfinals. Uh, only two players couldn't decide who gonna be qualified to the semifinals. So we have Hikaru Nakamura, number four in the world in the rapid time control. He's ranking 2800. 29 uh, he's american grandmaster 32 years old who's gonna play as black and his opponent chinese number one uh, and number three in the world ding liren he's rapid ranking 2836 uh, he's 29 years old and he's gonna play as white so without further ado let's see what happened on the board however first i would like to say that in the first game of the mini match we had a draw um, and then Ding Liren managed to win as black. And now we have game number three uh, and Hikaru Nakamura should at least draw, but better, of course, if he wins. So a uh, very interesting game. Let's see what just happened. Ding Liren opens with d4. We have g6, c4, bishop on g7 and now e4. Uh, d6, knight on c3, knight on f6. So we know already that we have king's Indian defense on the board. Knight on f3 by Ding Liren and now castle. Uh, bishop on e2, e5, castle uh, and now knight on c6 provoking d5. Uh, putting a lot of pressure actually on d4. So the main move of course is d5, knight on e7 and now b4. So the idea is of course to attack the, the base of the, um, of the pawn chain uh, as both of the sides have this uh, short pawn chain. Uh, white gonna play c5 um, and put the pressure on, on d6 uh, and black from the other hand gonna play f5, uh, attack the base on e4 and then maybe construct some attack on the, on the position of the king. Uh, and here black usually play knight on h5. This is the main line preparing f5. However, Hikaru Nakamura goes for the variation with knight on e8. And okay, uh, Ding Liren doesn't care what's going on on the, on the king side and he continue his attack on the queen side. So we have a4 and now f5 as planned. a5 creating the very beautiful bath tube formation uh, and now knight on f6. Rook on e1. So now uh, the rook actually uh, gonna support e4 just in case because now uh, black actually the main idea here is to play knight on e4 this is of course possible and after knight on e4 f takes on e4 this knight can jump to to g5 uh, and attacks the pawn on e4 so this is the main idea what black usually do is trying to win the the tempo because knight on f5 is a very natural move here so uh playing something like e3 and after bishop on e3 knight f5 this bishop retreats to to d2 uh, and then after bishop on h6 let's say queen c1 defending this this knight the game can continue this knight actually can jump to to d4 uh bishop on d1 and the game can continue a uh, very interesting line however Hikaru Nakamura doesn't like the the idea with the knight on g5 so he plays h6 uh against that idea and uh, of course now uh, Ding Liren doesn't like if Hikaru goes for for knight on e4 as this this knight has no square on g5 so he immediately plays e takes on f5 however the main idea here is knight on d2 uh, defending actually this pawn twice so so that is the idea but Ding Liren goes for I think for the first time on the on the top level, uh, so we can say it's a, such a novelty. Uh, e takes on f5, and now Black has dilemma: what to do now? Take with the pawn, take with the knight, or maybe take with the bishop. Uh, the problem with taking with the with the pawn, which usually when the when the pawn on h7 uh, is located and defending g6 it's it's pretty great idea so for example um g takes on f5 uh, but in this position knight h4 and uh, white can start to play on the on the light squares uh, and this bishop uh cannot really easy support maybe could do maybe this way uh, however white can bring the bishop can can bring the the queen can also bring the rook for example to attack on the king's position uh 
not really the greatest idea here. So uh, the engine actually recommends knight on f5 with very aggressive idea of playing uh, e4 and e3. So if white try to, uh, you know, play something against that, it's not so easy because even knight on d2, uh, it doesn't allow... Uh, white to stop this pawn. This pawn gonna advance uh, and e3 is coming. So probably knight on f1 has to be played and the position is very, very dynamic. This pawn can be very annoying, but it's also uh, quite weak. Uh, but it can be, of course, sacrificed uh, for the attack on the on the king's position. So very dynamic, very, very dangerous position. That's probably why uh, the engine likes it so much. However, Hikaru Nakamura just want to uh, bring his bishop to the game as this bishop, you know, suffers um, on the on the back rank. So we have bishop on f5, uh, rook on a2 by Ding Liren. Very important move because now this rook uh, can support f2 as black can, for example, create the battery and attack on f2. So that's the one of the ideas. Also, this rook can be used to 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 double the rooks on some of the uh, open files. The, the open files are not, you know, ready yet, but, you know, it's always, not always, but very often it's good to have the, the, the rooks on the first and the second ranks. Sometimes they can be vulnerable, so of course have to be uh, careful with that. We have g5 so hikaru nakamura goes for the attack and now h3 playing something against g4 which actually it was possible to play by hikaru nakamura but black would not achieve much with that for example g4 h takes on g4 knight on g4 and after bishop on d3 uh, black would have to decide what to do with the bishop exchange it or or maybe not if not, what to do with the bishop. However, white would control this e4 square. So the knight could jump on e4 very, very easily. So maybe that would be too early to play g4. Maybe it needs to be prepared. Uh, so we have queen on e8. So definitely the queen's gonna come to maybe to f7 to put the pressure on f2. Maybe to g6 to, to support the, the pawn on g4. However, knight on h2 by Ding Liren. So uh, look at this g4 now it's control four times it's four times so definitely impossible to um to push the pawn uh so as white actually stop black in advancing on the king side uh, hikaru also gonna do the same on the queen side and he plays a6 uh, and everybody in the in the in the studio actually started to love that hikaru loves to put you know makes the the double bath tube uh, and and all of this formation is a is a very very well known for especially for hikaru nakamura we have knight on g4 by ding liren uh, and now he's asking, okay, maybe exchange some pieces. We have bishop on g6 and now knight on f6, bishop on f6 and bishop d3. Asking, uh, okay, light square bishop should be also exchanged. Hikaru Nakamura doesn't agree and he played knight on f5 immediately. And now knight on e4, very nice blocker, very elastic blocker, uh, watching at, for example, at d6, watching at f6, uh, supporting also, also c5. So definitely c5 is on the radar of the Liren. Uh, we have bishop on g7 as the bishop was under attack and now f3. So Ding Liren, before he starts to attack on the queen side, first he want to solidify the position on the on the king side just to don't give black any counterplay uh, we have queen on f7 creating this battery and now immediately rook on f2 so solidifying the position even more uh, controlling g2 controlling f3 giving extra uh, you know over protection uh, and black doesn't have easy time you know on attacking on the on the king side we have rook a on d8 and now bishop on b1 so ding liren remaneuvering all his pieces improve the position of all the pieces before he starts um, to attack on the queen side we have king on h8 uh, the idea here is don't keep the king and the queen on the same diagonal 
this bishop moved to b1 so it can be indicator that from here it can also uh, attack not only on h7 but also this way so uh, that would be unfortunate if if for example c5 is coming with some ideas uh, you know of attacking on the on the queen and the and the king so uh, that would be terrible experience so hikaru nakamura a prophylactic move king on h8 we have bishop on b2 so moving the bishop on the longest diagonal but for now of course uh, black has dark square defender as well knight on h4 and it looks like it starts to to get hot on the king's position however it's a very very solid one so uh, even the the knight is taken the bishop can go to e4 uh, and everything gonna be fine with the position the the knight could be uh, also sacrifice on g2 but as you see f3 is is now controlled twice so there is no way for black actually to break through on the king side and now finally ding liren thinks okay i'm ready on the queen side so b5 the attacks uh, begins and uh, magnus carlsen in studio said that this knight uh, on h4 is is completely pointless probably what black should play it's maybe it's gonna be risky a takes on b5 c takes on b5 knight f5 remaneuver the knight to d4 bring it closer uh, to the queen side uh, and for example after queen on e4 knight d4 uh, can win the pawn on d5 maybe this way that's gonna be risky because white definitely gonna have the passed pawn but that definitely would be an idea uh, however uh, hikaru goes for bishop on f5 uh, and now we have b6 b6 this is the idea undermine uh, the c7 and then d6 gonna be vulnerable especially with this beautiful blocker very elastic blocker uh, attacking d6 the bishop can join and attack over here uh, so that is the idea uh, we have knight on g6 so hikaru told okay this knight this my attack is doesn't really work so i have to go back with the with the knight so he retreats uh, and bring the knight to the defense uh, we have g3 g3 just in case if hikaru instead of going to the defense would like to jump for example to f4 and uh, and this actually leaves the the h3 pawn uh, without protection however can it be taken uh, because if the pawn is taken then actually rook h2 and look at this rook that can be pretty dangerous so for example bishop on f5 knight g5 attacking the the king can go to g2 the rooks can be double on the h file uh, that could be very very risky so definitely it's uh, not worth to take on h3 this is why hikaru goes for c takes on b6 however now this pawn on d6 is is under attack however he didn't have uh, much choice uh, about that so we have a takes on b6 uh, and now knight on e7 so the knight instead of going to the juicy f4 square has to go to c8 where he gonna defend d6 pretty sad pretty sad square for the knight um, and now we have bishop on a3 as planned putting a lot of pressure now uh, on d6 uh, bishop on e4 is possible however after bishop on e4 first thing black just gave up the 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 bishop pair so uh, this is one disadvantage uh, but after knight on f5 maybe the game could be continued and uh, maybe this knight could even jump to d4 and continue the the game uh it was definitely possible to exchange the this dangerous knight uh, however hikaru nakamura goes for knight on c8 uh, moving the knight to totally passive position and now all the initiative is in the ding liren's hands he plays queen on b3 uh, we have bishop on h7 and now rook on d1 so the rook gonna defend d5 so definitely this move prepares c5 so c5 is definitely coming uh, we have bishop on g8 now putting the pressure maybe on this diagonal however it's quite pointless um, ding liren just simply plays g2 g2 uh, just taking um, 
in control the f3 square as the as the queen gonna move uh, so now the rook and the king can defend f3 so first safety first before making um, the attack you know safety first we have bishop on h7 so Hikaru thinks, okay, maybe this diagonal is better. And now finally c5. We have d takes on c5, knight takes on c5. And now light square bishops are exchanged on b1. We have rook on b1. And what to play next? Because knight on e6 is coming and this threat is a pretty serious threat. So, uh, for example, if you take on d5, because the pawn was defended only once, then knight on e6 is still coming, and of course it's gonna be defended, so, uh, you know, being exchanged down, that's not the greatest idea. Rook on d5 looks pretty interesting. The problem is, actually you can, you can try to find the way. Knight on b7, knight on b7, and look at this, queen on b7, bishop on f8 bishop on f8 and now what white would have to play do you see that already queen on d5 queen on d5 that's amazing queen on d5 b7 and now this pawn gonna promote here or here uh you cannot you know jump uh and and you know with the with the queen to b8 just to block it it's not possible so uh that would be winning very beautiful so rook on d5 would work it would work is if not this this pawn and if not the the knight on c8 so <laughs> this this doesn't work uh also rook on d6 it looks pretty crazy as both of the rooks are on this diagonal however look at this knight on e6 and the rook can go to b6 okay uh, and it doesn't work uh, only because after queen on d3 rook on g8 so everything looks fine uh white actually can just exchange everything okay and after let's say rook on b2 knight a4 let's say rook c2 rook gonna come to c7 and gonna be really powerful gonna win this pawn uh gonna put a lot of pressure on the even there are some mating ideas here so very dangerous position so uh, instead hikaru nakamura tries rook f on e8 and now we have knight on e6 anyway rook on d7 and rook on c1 so rook is coming to c7 this is the this is the spot for the rook and of course rook gonna be untouchable as this pawn would be uh, would be the pawn on the seventh rank and that would be a uh, completely you know winning position we have knight on e7 trying to remaneuver the the knight but ding Liren is not interested in any complications and he simply j exchange now how to take the bishop actually it doesn't matter um if the rook takes then rook on c7 is coming anyway and after let's say bishop on f6 queen d3 uh push this pawn and win the game okay queen on h7 is possible but simply queen on d1 with the same idea uh, and just play d6 uh, if rook on d7 then of course knight on c5 winning the exchange uh, attacking the pawn and uh, even rook on c7 b takes on c7 it's uh it's easily wins the game okay this these two past pawns of course uh are gonna win the game uh, and if queen on e6 so giving them the exchange this way doesn't really matter d takes on e7 rook on e7 and just simply exchange everything let's say queen on d8 rook e8 and now forcing exchange otherwise that's gonna be a checkmate so uh let's say queen on d7 rook d7 now this pawn is under attack if black try to uh defend then simply this end game of course is winning for white with the rook against the bishop so this rook can just come pick up these pawns and then win the game so uh we have queen on e7 at least the queen can stop um, the the pawn however does it help we have rook on c7 uh, and now queen on d6 so the idea is 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 okay however uh it's just impossible to do anything uh, white has already too much advantage we have simply rook f on c2 double the rooks uh, and now whatever actually black play it's 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 just game over if queen on d5 then simply queen on d5 rook on d5 
winning the bishop. So that's of course winning. So uh, Hikaru Nakamura first moved the bishop. However, now queen a4 and in this position Hikaru just resign and he resign because he has nothing to do here. Uh, for example, rook on c7, then queen on e8, of course, is winning, so uh, it doesn't really work. Uh, if, from the other hand, rook e on d8, just making some blockade, uh, knight on d8, rook on d8, now queen on e4, and now checkmate is coming you can try something like bishop on g7 yes you defend the the mate but now uh white just gonna double the rooks on the seven rank and and of course win the game so that's also not possible uh rook d on e7 this looks like the best option however this doesn't work as well and also very simple solution just rook on e7 just exchange the pieces uh if rook on e7, then actually rook on c8 with check and after king on h7, bang, this is a checkmate. This is a checkmate, okay? All of these squares are, of course, controlled by, by the white pieces, so that would be a checkmate. Uh, and if queen on e7 also doesn't help because rook on c7, we know that already it's coming. Queen on d6, uh, because queen actually is trapped, but keep in mind that this rook is, is hanging, so that also would be a checkmate. So this is why after queen on a4, Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game. So we know already all four uh, semi-finalists, and I would like to show you um, how it looks like. Magnus Carlsen plays against Ding Liren in semi-finals, and Jan Nepomniashi against Anish Gil so uh, we're gonna see the games tomorrow and and yeah that's all for today if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other games press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one